Hello everyone! Kumusta po kayo? Sana po ay nasa mabuti kayong kalagayan. We are back on our regular content on the Philippine Real Estate wherein we publish a video each week that is every Sunday 6am or 7am in the Philippine Standard Time about different issues affecting the real estate in the Philippines including those that involve land ownership, land acquisition, at iba pang mga bagay na may kinalaman sa real estate. I also continue to publish videos on the Philippine Immigration and Citizenship every Saturday at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the morning, Philippine Standard Time. If you are new to this channel and you think that this channel can be of help in providing you with useful and relevant information, please feel free to subscribe to this channel and click on that notification bell icon so that you will get notified of our future videos. Maraming salamat po! Sa previous video po natin, atin na pong natalakay kung gaano po kahalaga ang pagkandak ng due diligence bago po tayo bumili ng lupa sa Pilipinas, lalo na may mga limitations at restrictions po na iniimpose ang ating mga batas. Kagaya po ng mga restrictions that apply to ancestral domains at ancestral lands, kung hindi nyo pa po napanood ang video na to, I can put the link up here or you can check it out in our recent videos. This time, I would like to talk about another area na napaka-importante rin. And I am talking about lands that are classified as forest lands. Baka kasi po yung lupang nabili nyo na o balak nyo pang bilhin ay classified pala as forest lands. Maybe some of you are already aware na ang forest lands are lands that are not alienable and disposable lands of the public domain. At kung ang pinag-usapan po natin ay forest lands, hindi po ibig sabihin all the time na ito ay kagubatan na puno ng mga punong kahoy. It is not the physical condition that determines whether it is part of the forest land. It is the legal classification na nakapaloob po sa mga batas at sa mga presidential proclamations. Marami ng mga forest lands na sa ngayon ay inhabited na. Ibig sabihin, marami ng mga bahay na nakatirik at marami na ring naninirahan. Ang iba naman ay halos hindi mo naman sabing forest land dahil ginawa na itong farmland. Ang iba naman ay ginawa ng ecotourist attractions or resorts. But it does not change the fact na ito ay classified pa rin as forest land. At dahil ito ay forest land, hindi ito alienable and disposable land of the public domain. It cannot be privately owned at hindi ito pwedeng mapatituluhan hanggat hindi ito na-declare officially as alienable and disposable land. What I am trying to say here is that if you are dealing with a property na hindi titulado, kahit na ito ay may tax declaration na, you really have to be more circumspect, more careful, and more probing. Lalo po kayong dapat maging meticuloso. If you need to go to the DENR SINRO, Upang magtanong, gawin nyo po. That is to make sure kung ang lupa ba ay alienable and disposable. It will be likely the case kung ang lupa ay situated in the rural or remote areas, lalong-lalo na yung mga nasa paanan ng bundok. And as I have mentioned, hindi po magmamatter kung ang lupa ay cleared na at ginagawa na itong sakahan. And I would like to emphasize this again. The fact na may tax declaration na at updated pa yung payment ng real property tax does not mean na alienable and disposable na yung lupa. The tax declaration does not convert a forest land to an alienable and disposable land. The Supreme Court has been very clear on this. It is axiomatic that the possession of forest lands or other inalienable public lands cannot ripen into private ownership. In Municipality of Santiago Isabela versus Court of Appeals, the court declared that inalienable public lands cannot be acquired by acquisitive prescription. Prescription both acquisitive and extinctive does not run against the state. The possession of public land however long the period may have extended never confers title thereto upon the possessor because the statute of limitations with regard to public land does not operate against the state unless the occupant can prove possession and occupation of the same under claim of ownership for the required number of years to constitute a grant from the state. So, you might ask, ano yung basis na mga nag-o-occupy ng mga forest lands? Dahil 
kitang-kita naman po natin na may mga nagsasaka at may mga nakatira sa mga bahagi ng forest lands all across the Philippines. Well, ang basis po nito ay yung license agreement or permit na ini-issue ng Department of Environment and Natural Resources or DENR. Most common po nito ay yung Certificate of Stewardship Contract na iginagawad bilang privilege to occupy or to till or farm a certain piece of land which is situated within a forest land na na-identify na bilang Community-Based Forest Management or CBFM area. To be qualified for the Certificate of Stewardship, you must be a Filipino citizen, must be of legal age, must be actual tiller or cultivator of the land to be allocated, you must be a member of the People's Organization which was granted a CBFM area subject of the CS application, you must be willing to develop the land as well as participate in the community-based forest management activities, and you must not be a previous holder of a certificate of stewardship that was cancelled for a cause. Kailangan po natin maunawaan na ang stewardship certificate na ito ay isang pribileyo lamang na iginagawad ng pamahalaan and it doesn't ripen to ownership. This privilege is granted for 25 years and renewable for another 25 years. You are lucky if uh, eventually the land is declassified from being inalienable at ginawa itong alienable and disposable land. The next question is, pwede ba itong ibenta o ilipat sa iba? Sa ilanin po ng DENR Administrative Order Number 98-45 dated June 24, 1998, ito po yung nakasaad. The Certificate of Stewardship, including those issued prior to this administrative order, may be transferred, sold, or conveyed in whole or in part under the following conditions. The transferee is qualified beneficiary as defined under Section 2 hereof, provided that the total land area under the stewardship of the latter does not exceed 10 hectares. At least 50% of the area covered by the Certificate of Stewardship has been developed, examples planted to agricultural crops, trees or forest species, developed pasture or fish pond, and other productive land uses. The terms and conditions of the original agreement shall remain in force and effect. However, the provision prohibiting the subleasing of the land or portion thereof in old certificate of stewardship issued prior to this order is hereby revoked. The agreement shall remain valid for the remaining unexpired term of the original agreement. The transfer is endorsed by the People's Organization or PO through a resolution of its officers and the instrument of transfer is duly notarized. The new Certificate of Stewardship and Stewardship Agreement, MAP and other supporting documents shall be forwarded to the PENRO for approval in accordance with Section 3 hereof. At nakasadaman po sa DENR Administrative Order Number 2004-29 na In case of death or incapacity of the Certificate of Stewardship holder, the Certificate of Stewardship shall be transferred to his or her legal heirs. I tried to find out if DAO Number 98-45 has already been repealed, amended or modified, but so far, I haven't seen any subsequent issuance from the DENR in that regard. So I'd like to think that it is safe to assume that DAO number 98-45 is still the one being followed until now. So while the land itself cannot be subject of a sale under the DAO number 98-45, the certificate of stewardship can be conveyed, sold, or transferred subject lamang dun sa mga nabanggit na mga conditions. So if someone is offering you a piece of land that is for sale, no matter how ideal it is for you, wag na wag po natin kalimutang usisain ang lahat ng aspeto ng property bago po tayo mag -decision. And don't forget that a certificate of stewardship contract expires in 25 years, although renewable naman po ito for another 25 years. Alamin niyo po yung mga limitations, restrictions, at conditions regarding ownership of that property at ang mga apportinant rights 
katulad ng mga nabanggit po natin sa ating discussion. I hope that you have learned something from this video. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. And don't forget to hit that notification bell icon so that you will get notified of our future videos. Always remember, ignorance of the law excuses no one from compliance therewith. I will see you in my next video. Ingat po kayo.